The Final Four opened on Friday night with a former champ and the only team able to make it back to Salem from a year ago as Williams hooked up with Guilford in the first national semifinal. The Quakers tried to assert themselves in the paint in the first half as Tyler Sanborn made himself right at home against the Eves on the low block. But Blake Schultz and his running mates were able to counter that muscle and build a working margin as they led by nine points with just six minutes left in the opening half. But that lead would quickly disappear thanks to 11 first half Williams turnovers and the heady play of seniors Rhett Bonner and Clay Henson. Their efforts coupled with Sanborn's inside play and 14 points from the productive Guilford bench turned that nine point deficit into an eight point halftime lead. Guilford's amazing turnaround put the Quakers on top 43 to 35 at the half. You know, the last eight or so minutes of the half, I thought we played with a lot of energy. Um, you know, we got on a roll there. We were, we were making baskets. We were stopping them. You know, they were missing. We got to the glass, and that's kind of our game. So we had, you know, we had the blueprint there for the end of the, you know, the end of that first half. I told them the difference at halftime was that we had 11 turnovers. We were trying to do too much um, and went away from what, we're good at and um, that was the difference in the first half that's why they went on their run and, and got some separation. Sanborn's personal block party helped the Quakers push that lead to 11 early in the second half but Troy Whittington countered him inside and opened things up for his teammates on the perimeter. Williams went on a 23 to 11 run in an eight minute span to regain the lead with some unconscious outside shooting. Schultz, James Wang, and Alex Rubin led a Williams jump shot clinic that would see the East singe the Nets by hitting 70% of their shots in the second half, not to mention 71% of their attempts from three-point land. I think we play very well as a team. We're very unselfish, and I think uh, we got a lot of guys on this team that can shoot the ball, obviously, and I think uh, Coach gives us the green light, and if we're open, we're going to shoot it and uh, it goes in most of the time. <laughs> they made a lot of tough shots. You know, Schultz made a lot of tough shots with, with Clay hanging on him, um, and we could, you know, we, we, could, we could get there and maybe get a one-point lead or get it back even, but they'd always come down and make another tough shot. Uh, you know, 16 for 28 from three, that's, that's awfully good. We just met a team that was, uh, a, it was a really good team and, and a team that was on fire, and, uh, you know, they say, uh, coaches always say the way to beat Guilford College is you got to shoot well from the three-point line, and they did that. We went small the entire second half. Uh, after, from the 18-minute mark on, we went small. And we didn't do it in the first half, and uh, that's our best lineup. They're down there shooting contested three-pointers, you know. Clay's got a hand in my man's face. He can't even see the basket. He's making threes. I mean, we're pressuring the ball, and they're skipping, hitting shots all over the place. That's... That's tough. They deserve it tonight. I mean, they were just knocking down really tough shots. And, I mean, you had to give it to them. Um, uh, I mean, we, they had hands in their faces. Uh, they were, we were covering their screens, and uh, they were just stepping up and knocking down big shots. And, I mean, that's what you got to do to be a champion. And, you know, they, did, they stepped up today, and they played very well. Guilford was still down just two points at the two-minute mark, but the Quakers would get no closer as Williams hit eight straight free throws in the final 42 seconds to complement their blistering marksmanship from the field. The Eves in Guilford's season with a 97-88 semifinal win in a game that featured 10 lead changes and nine ties. It's the first time, you know, I've ever really thought, you know, this is my last game no matter what. And uh, it's... It's kind of crazy when you think about it, but uh, we have a great senior class. We got seven guys who, you know, everyone's made a huge contribution to the team in terms of leadership, work ethic. I mean, these guys have been doing it all, all year long, and uh, everyone's made a huge impact. And we're all real excited for tomorrow. Um, and just play, plan for one, plan for one another, and just really looking forward to having a good time tomorrow. You know, we feel good about what we did. They feel bad right now. I understand why they feel bad. I mean, they played their last college basketball game. I mean, I know, I, they feel bad because we lost, sure, and that we don't have a chance to win a national championship. But knowing these three guys, they feel worse because they don't get to play for Guilford College anymore. And that's, that's what hurts them. That's what hurts me the most because um, we played our hearts out. And I, I, again, I thought we played well. They played better. And so it happened to us two years in a row. Okay, when you get to the last four, there's four really good teams. And not many teams get to win a national championship. And, and we're not going to this time, but we don't think any less of the program or anything. Because
because of that. We, we gave it our best shot. We tried as hard as we could. We prepared well. These guys played really well, and we came up short. And we're, we're still pleased with, with what we did. When, you know, great players get on a roll and they're in the zone, you can't stop them, you know, and, and that's what they did today. I think uh, the main thing is coaches stressed to all of us to enjoy the journey since day one, and I think uh, all the seniors and everyone on the team has done that, and I think it's, uh, it's really special that we get to play in this game tomorrow, and I think we're all very excited.